Judge Lauren Lake goes crazy on paternity court. Right. Don't distract her from hearing the testimony right. about what you were talking about to her right. when she was already pregnant right. and the way you was lying back and forth so right. that you could keep having sex with two women. I'm trying to understand what day of the week is your child over at another man's Christmas function that neither one of you all are saying you know. Desperate times called for desperate measures. The plaintiff was in court to prove he didn't father baby Niasia. However, the crack was that he got slammed with something else by the baby's mama, and that made him desperate for answers. You say the defendant went behind your back and opened a child support case, meaning you are the father of her four-month-old daughter. You're hoping today's results will prove you are not the biological father before the child support order goes into effect. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Two women at the same time? Ugh, this guy was going places. How did people pull this off, man? I'd never. However, it all blew up in his face pretty soon afterward, as they landed in the paternity court. Is it your position, Mr. Hammond, that both women were aware that you were sleeping with him at the same exact time and they were comfortable with that? Kiera wasn't Keep aware. Keep it 100, as you would say. 100. Kiera was aware, wasn't aware, she was. I was aware? Okay, so when he told so me he was gonna get money from her, I said, go ahead, I'm not gonna give you my money, you need to. Uh-oh, Mr. Hammond did not just say that. The audacity. That slip of the tongue better have consequences. I mean, where do these people get the confidence to pull stuff like that? He got on my nerves, and I'm pretty sure on the judges as well. Let's take a look. You were both pregnant at the same time. Right. While this young woman was pregnant with your child, right. and I you were still her. having sex with Miss James. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Well, we all know that because they're, you know, kind of close. So that's why I say, of course, because it, it's close. Oh, man, you don't get to appear in the court of Judge Lauren Lake and behave like that. And you think you can get away with it? Heck no. Didn't I tell you this guy was in for it? Well, prepare to be schooled by the judge. Right. Don't distract her from hearing the testimony that Miss James is going to tell right. about what you were talking about to her right. when she was already pregnant right. and the way you was lying back and forth so right. that you could keep having sex with two women and right. then get two women pregnant potentially at the same right. time. What kind of mind-boggling relationships are people having these days? Oh, how I miss simple times. Moving on, when the judge can't make sense of things happening here, what chance do we have? How long do you think these guys can keep this up, though? You had had sex with two different men. Right. How are you so certain it's Mr. Hammond's um, baby? It's really now, we had a 50-50 split right, right now. He's old. His sperm is not strong. Like oh, the, uh, the other man is an older man. Yeah. How old? 60. <laughs> Drama with a capital D. It just kept getting nowhere. On the bright side, at least Judge Lake had a moment to lay back and have some water. You gotta keep yourself hydrated amid the chaos, am I right? I asked her, is that Chris's baby? She said, no, that's not his baby. I don't want nothing to do with you guys. And uh, you guys could have a happy life and I have nothing else to say to you I guys. I did tell her that. She I did, did tell say her that, that and we blocked is, each other. Why is it any of her business, period? I, uh, my baby, I'm the Tim, he don't have nothing to do. <laughs> it is my not. business. Hey, let's get some water. I'm done with yeah. this. That's gotta be one huge rock the fiance was living under. She had no clue her fiance, Mr. Hammond, was up to all kinds of naughty shenanigans behind her back. Where was the sacred love and respect from the betrothal contract, man? I am not gonna be able to change this dynamic between the two of you. Right. I can't change that. Right. It's a chemistry I don't even think you guys understand. Really. Cause you keep calling, she keeps coming. School was in session for the engaged couple and the estranged sweetheart. These guys were in desperate need of some lessons of a lifetime. And who better to deliver them than our very own Judge Lake? Here it goes. You all are in a cycle. I can see the exchange in the courtroom, and I've allowed this to play out. No, you the just cycle need a capital D for denial on your it. chest. It's gonna be you broken. are in denial. And the reason why he gets to be with you too, because you get yourself so worked up that it's all gonna be Miss Jane's fault, and she wants him, and she's doing this. But at the end of the day, this is very real. After making a mockery of loyalty and engagement, finally we reach the end of the court proceedings. What was left were the DNA results, the one thing to clarify this paternity doubt. So, let's hear it. Mr. Hammond, you are not the father. Okay, that's fine. You are not the father. Talk about being in between a rock and a hard place. The former being the husband and the latter the lover, 
Well, that's what happened to Miss Johnson when the plaintiff brought her to court and claimed baby Briley was his. The Johnsons, however, didn't buy that. Now, Mr. Anderson, you argue that Mr. Johnson is forcing his wife to keep the child from you. Yes, ma'am. You believe four-year-old Briley is your daughter. I do. Well, if her husband was out having fun, why couldn't she? That motto prompted Miss Johnson to throw caution to the wind. She did, and the rest was history. Mr. Anderson sincerely believed the child to be his. The only hurdle was this person. Your position was your husband left you to go be with another woman. Now, is that the reason you were separated or this happened during the separation? That happened before the separation. Mr. Anderson, he, he always treated me like Wayne. We had instant connection. You were with another woman. But Your Honor, she left me yes, to go back to him. The same old charade of he's a liar, she's a liar coming right up. Baby Mama called the defendant a liar and he wasn't too happy about it, obviously. Whew, what a pickle. Who was telling the truth and who was making a fool out of the other? Well, really, at that time, yeah, I was I was like, I was cool with it because, like I said, I got a family. And we, you know, I was cool with it for a minute, you know. For a but minute. It, yeah, he's I was cool liar. with it. I was cool. But he's, then he's after Briley. What is he lying about specifically? Well, about us still talking. I was are, are you saying that because you don't want Brad to know we still talk? I'm saying what? that because that's true. Another round of very narratives followed up pretty soon. Seemed like these guys didn't know how to stick to one claim at a one time. And how could they, since they couldn't stick one person at a time? Shame, shame, people. You said you were cool right. with that, and, but, and you just but, stepped but back because you but had once a family. when I heard that she was here in this world, then I had a change of heart. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna call and check on and see how she's doing. Were you calling out of duty, or were you calling out of curiosity, like, I want to see this baby and see if it looks like me? I want to see the baby. Right. You want to see the baby? Yes, ma'am. Miss Johnson didn't believe a word that came out of the plaintiff's mouth. Even though Mr. Anderson had his older son as his witness to strongly back up his claim, still, baby mama vehemently denied this, even at the cost of being established as a bad mother. Are you suggesting to me that your child was over his house with his family at a Christmas function and you didn't know Without about my it? knowledge. You didn't know about it. Now. Time for some reality checks for the married couple. Brought to them by our very own Judge Lake. She served them right back and more. Time for some much needed parenting lessons for the whole group. I'm trying to understand what day of the week is your child over at another man's Christmas function that neither one of you all are saying you know. That's because it ain't his child because he ain't, he ain't there with her. He just sleep, girl. He, ain't, he don't do nothing with her. This circus had continued long enough. Before the situation got way out of control, the judge was ready for the results. And frankly, so were we. There had been no concrete evidence, and the only thing that ruled paternity court was those DNA results. Her biological father is Mr. Anderson. Toad. Uh, Shana, may, I like sister, may I see my little sister? May I see my little sister? You would think these guys would go their merry way afterward. <laughs> nope. Sadly, that didn't happen. The husband and the lover looked ready to turn the court into their backyard, then and there, and Lauren Lake wouldn't have it. Two men are willing to step up to the plate and make sure she has father that she needs and deserves. However, this is her biological father. This is the man she understands is her daddy. Are you prepared to figure this out for her? Are you just saying you want Mr. Anderson to just walk away? Because I hate to tell you, I don't think he's walking. I think he will. Barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? Nope, just pregnant in the paternity court. Miss Barrett was in desperate need of a father for her unborn baby. The problem was that she didn't know who fathered it. Yep. The defendant, on the other hand, refused every claim. You say you believe Mr. Mullinex is also responsible for these expenses because he may be the father. Mr. Mullinex, you say you refuse to pay anything for an unborn child that isn't yours. Yes, Your Honor. You deny paternity and claim Ms. Barrett had sex with you, her ex-boyfriend, and several other men. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wow. This baby mama took the weekly planning to the next level. She had her hands full. I mean, gotta hand it to her. She followed her weekly appointments very diligently. We could learn a thing or two from her. Well, I was sleeping with Mr. Molinax um, Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> On a weekly schedule? Yes. <laughs> now, how did this love triangle come to be? That was the question. As it turned out, Mr. Molinax wasn't a saint either. While leaving the bed of his ex-wife, Bam! He fell straight into the bed of Miss Barrett. 
You can't make this stuff up. I walked in and he introduced me to her and I could tell from the first statement she made that she was a complete airhead. He took me in the back bedroom. Wait a minute, <laughs> you're talking about Miss Barrett? Yes, ma'am. How did this progress and you're married? Well, my, me and my wife separated and after we separated, me and that's when I began my relationship with her. Okay. I went over to her house. The first time I went over there, within 20 minutes, we were in the bedroom. Miss Barrett had been a naughty girl around town. And according to the baby daddy, her reputation preceded her. A busy lady indeed, which was obvious given her full schedule. However, she denied everything thrown at her. She was good at things like that. I mean, that's pretty much what led so me to I believe that it'd be easy. I need you to use respectful language in the courtroom, uh, but Miss Barrett, I apologize. were you getting text messages from multiple men asking you for sexual favors and encounters? Would no, it like that? no, yes, it was not. Was. It was not sexual encounters. The good old conception calendar was out in the open, and would you look at that? That is one symmetrical calendar. Looked like Miss Barrett was in for some harsh truths from the judge. About time, if I may say so myself. We all saw that coming from a mile away. Just a month ago, he was telling me that we were going to be together and that we were going to be a family. And just last week, we just had sex last week, and he was telling me that he wanted to be With a family. No, that's Mullinax? not true. Yes. A month ago, I went to her house. I got drunk. I made a mistake. I went over there. And yeah, we ended up having sex. No. But I mean, I told her what she wanted to hear just to get what I wanted, but I do not so want to wait be wait a minute. Her. Was the baby mama just that naive? Or was she just insatiable? Hard to say which was which. It was times like these that made us question everything. It's easy to make a mess of things, but to clean that up takes effort. A kind that these guys lacked evidently. Why is it the exact same days each week and then the weekend? Mr. Molinax had a job time, so therefore he would come over on the weekends and leave on Monday nights. So then you'd be with your... My boyfriend. And where would your boyfriend think you were on the weekend? He wasn't around. He was just out hanging out with his friends and stuff like that. And this went on for an entire month? Yeah. Mr. Molinax didn't come alone. His girlfriend was there to support him while poor Miss Barrett stood on the side, all pregnant and alone. A sorrowful sight. Moving on, the girlfriend was called up on the podium. However, her sight brought tears to the baby mama's eyes. She's really just another notch in his belt. Like, she's nothing. She's nobody <laughs> well, I mean, special. look, you don't know yeah. what goes on between our relationship. I, and you, and not, I don't care what know. you're saying. You need to let me speak for a sec. Okay, and you know the court facts. He's been over the house. house. Do you, you not? Okay, let's He's, get some order. Caught between the girlfriend and the lover, Mr. Mullinax had gone quiet all of a sudden. And the judge called him out on this. After co-creating all this ruckus, he doesn't get to remain tight-lipped now. However, the guy soon turned out to be one cold-hearted jerk of a human. Yeesh! We did not have sex a week ago. It's been a month ago, and I was drunk when it happened. I mean, that's a mistake I made and when I was drinking. You know, I know there's person. no excuse for what I did. I mean, the truth comes out no matter what. But the fact of the matter is, I do not want to be with her. I told her what she wanted to do. And Miss Barrett, moment. are you saying that he did tell you that you all were going to be together? Yes, he did. You'd better watch out when the judge gets mad. But you'd better run away when she gets mad and disappointed, all rolled into one. And that's what Miss Barrett made her feel eventually. A learning lesson for the soon-to-be baby mama coming right up. You have given yourself away. You stand at this podium by yourself, going to doctor's appointments by yourself, after you done gave away a month's worth of days and nights with two men that are not, will not, or cannot be a part of it and share it with you. Seriously, man? Baby daddy just couldn't seem to resist the allure of this woman. Eh, go preach about it. You said you didn't want anything to do with Miss Barrett, yet there you were at her doorstep again. Not cool. After an entire month of Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, and last month slip up, suddenly now last week you went over there and just went over there to talk. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma One after another, this case took a revolting turn. About the time the proceedings came to an end, and aren't we all glad? A baby's fate was on the line who wasn't even born yet. Let's put an end to the wait and get to the results. Mr. Mullinac, you are the father. <laughs> Kudos to the baby mama. She got a father for her unborn baby. Now, how he would turn out to be, though, was still a mystery. While he was swimming in the post-shock waves of the results, he forgot he had a woman carrying his child. 
Judge Lake ripped him a new one then and there. And at least see if she's okay and she's carrying your child over there crying. Step over there. Now, she's been by herself. She done stood up here by herself. She has admitted her secrets, her shame, and basically told more than most women in this world would ever admit to.